Well, this album's probably one of the most poetic and certainly musically one of the most beautiful you've done. Are you pleased with it? I'm very pleased. I feel that it really perfects everything that's been slightly attempted in the past. And I feel it's the absolutely most whole Smith record. There's an interesting thing about it is there's an awful lot lyrically in it mm. that's about loving and loving and losing, mm. which you haven't really touched on before. Mm. Was, why is that? Has something in your life changed? Well, it, it really hasn't, to be quite honest. No, I really still feel, and I, I will admit that I, the themes are still more or less within me the same. They haven't really changed. Nothing uh, incredible has happened at all. So, but once again, as musically, I think it perfects everything that's been touched upon. I think lyrically, I've got a lot better, really. If it's musically perfect, does that worry you then about what you go on to next? No, it, I don't worry about it, but I, I can recognise the fact that within the future, there has to be some slight, um, um, something new, I think. There has to be a slight change, but nothing, nothing dramatic, nothing drastic. How does Donnie Marr feel about it? Does he feel the same mm, as you do, that yes. he's reached the zenith? Well, yes. I mean, it can almost sound like a, exhausting you know, one's dimensions or the capabilities of a particular uh, viewpoint, um, which can sound quite negative. But it isn't. It's a positive thing, I think. You know, we've made quite a lot of records. That's what really it uh, says to me. So one of the interesting tracks, Paint a Vulgar Picture, is the mm. most sort of damning view of the music business I've mm. ever heard. Yeah. Now, you obviously have to operate within that music business, so mm -hmm. how do you, you cope with the two ideals? It's very hard because, it's very hard because if you have very strong opinions about the music industry, as most performers do not, it's very, very difficult, especially when, with interviews, one gets the chance to air these opinions. And I think that really, if you have views which are considered um, quite strong, they're instantly considered quite negative because I think the music industry gets very, very, uh, it's very impatient with people who have views, <laughs> viewpoints, because it's uh, all a very nice organized uh, pattern and it's a nice little bubble and it works really well and it employs lots of people. So therefore, if, if, you, if you become to suggest change, well, I think you're quite quickly swept away. Not many people have uh, ever tried it, I might add, as you know. <laughs> But if, if, you, if the suggestion of um, um, change is there... Do you, I mean, do you think it's possible to change the nature of the music business? I mean, it doesn't seem to be. I think it's possible to change it in small ways, and it takes a very long time. But overall, in the most important and most effective ways, I don't think it is at all. I think the, con the people who control the music industry are, are very strong. In a way and also, an important point <laughs> is that groups very rarely tend to band together. It's a very, uh, artists are very isolated and there's no real strong, um, for instance, I, I find it very hard to believe in a movement of groups, for instance, or a movement of artists. Is that everybody's, because they're in competition with Yes, either? and everybody's scrambling and everybody wants, um, seems to want to be liked. Don't you want to be liked? Yes, I do, but not really at any price. Not at any price. Is it important then that you're liked just by the people who buy your records or, or by everybody? I mean, is there a secret mm, Morrissey in there wants to I be think, loved? I think it's important, as with everybody, I presume, in daily life, to be liked for the right reasons, I expect. Because another of your tracks, you know, last night I dreamt that somebody loved me. I mean, that's mm. a very moving little mm. song, a very sort of heart-rending one. Is that yes. you? I mean, are you writing for the song? It's me, there? yes, it is me. And uh, sometimes I, um, well, most of the time, I, I feel that although the Smiths are quite enormously popular, those records will never be played. Those songs will never be heard. It's, it, it, and I realised that, I think, when Meet His Murder um, entered the chart at number one, and the title track was never, ever played anywhere, I thought that was quite peculiar. And also The Queen Is Dead entered at number two. And I never heard any of those songs ever on the radio, whether it be nighttime or daytime. Well, I played it, I played it. Yes, actually, Muriel, I heard it when you played it. And you said lots of very nice things about it. I was actually in on that night. Mm. Well, being loved a, a funny thing, especially if you're in the music business, though, because to get back to the, the point of changing things in the music business, mm. a lot of bands and 
previously have always tried to go for social reform and radical mm. change, but in a way they've been caught up in, their own, in, in the system themselves. Yeah. Do you feel that by criticising things, in a way you're falling into the same trap, you can criticise the music business, but you're part of it. Mm. Do you feel that that's a difficult thing to get over? Well, people find it hard to believe that I really don't feel part of it, but I really, really don't. I don't really feel part of the big um, whirlpool of the music industry. I don't feel that at all. I never have. And I think perhaps in order to feel a part of it, you really have to go through the usual ri the party ritual and um, such things. Being part of that whole big nonsensical pop. Bob. Ligging, doing <laughs> yes, and bopping. ligging and bopping and being seen and patting other people on the back unnecessarily. I could never do that. There have been so many opportunities over the last few years for the Smiths to make their life so much easier. Like what? Just really by simply being totally agreeable with everybody. And are you disagreeable? Yes. In what way? I find it very hard just to, to simply slide into the typical role of uh, being a successful pop star. I mean, even for me to say those words is quite unusual. It's quite awkward for me to say them. And uh, for the first time quite recently, we went to Italy and we were doing several TV, television shows with lots of famous people like a Spano Ballet, Curiosity Killer Cat, and a lot of famous people. And we were all together for four days. And it was the first time I'd ever been in that situation before because I've not really met many um, performers, stars, or whatever. And I found it very intriguing because I, I found them all quite nice. But it was really very evident to me that the, there is this very, very strong um, network. And there's this very strong uh, mode of behavior. And I realized even more so on inspecting that, just how far away I was from it. Did they recognize it? I think they did, but they were very nice to me. Very, very nice to me. I don't know why. <laughs> no reason they shouldn't be. Fools, really. <laughs> but somebody said, in fact, I think Alexi Sale said that he's noticed that uh, celebrities who consider themselves equal status tend to hang about together. For instance, you wouldn't get uh, curiosity kill the cat hanging around with the stones, but you'd get the stones and Bowie mm. hanging around together. Yes. So mm. are there no contemporaries of you that sort of attempt to get your friendship because of that? Yes, there are one or two people, but I don't think it's really, uh, perhaps simply because we are of the same generation, musical generation. Yes, there are, I can't deny there are one or two people, such as um, Pete Burns, Lloyd Cole. So, uh, yes, I can't really deny that at all. <laughs> But talking about the album lyrically again, another mm. thing that's, that's unusual is you, you've been writing about girls in it more. Mm. You don't normally write about girls. Mm. Why have you suddenly noticed them? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really just suddenly noticed them. <laughs> I'm short-sighted, but no, it's really because initially I suffered this great delusion that um, by writing words which were um, theoretically genderless at any rate, that I was actually therefore speaking for everybody. But a lot of people were pointing out to me, well, this isn't really happening at all. You're completely deluding yourself. You know, women don't exist in your world at all, which wasn't true. So um, I think I felt over the last 12 months a need to be a little bit more demonstrative where you know, citing gender was concerned. So you're doing it in a talkingist way then, as mentioned the girlies. No, you really <laughs> missed the point. I've always done it, but I feel, I feel that it has to be a little bit more slightly simplified, and you have to actually use the word her instead of... <laughs> and imply it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you make no secret about the fact that you're celibate. So is, are all these lyrics imaginary, then? Are they imaginary loves? Not really. I mean, I don't think I've really mentioned um, sex anywhere. So, uh, but it's still implied very mm, much. I mean, the, well, the, the implication, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, yes, there's an implication. So the spiritual love you're talking about then? Mm, quite largely, yes. In fact, completely, yes. Completely spiritual love. And is it imaginary or is it true? Oh, it's true, yes. Yes, it is true. I mean, I do, I do know people. <laughs> 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 do, do you have a rough time, even you know, in the spiritual sense of loving people? I mean, do, are you, have you had a life that's full of disappointment? Yes, I've had a dreadful life. <laughs> it's been awful from start to finish. <laughs> um, 
Well, in some, in, in some ways, yes, I think it has. It might have been slightly over-documented in the past, I think, <laughs> but it's there nonetheless. But I do see people, and I know people, and, uh, but I can't deny that I do generally find re relationships quite um, blunderously awful. Is that your fault? Yes. So because you choose the wrong person or that you're not capable of holding down a relationship? <laughs> no, it doesn't feel real. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be your